You, you want to be financially free. People don't understand. They think it's freedom is what it is. I want to go where I want, do what I want, when I want. That's what fi real freedom is, right? You want to be healthy. You want to be, so it's a mix of all of that. I just started a year ago, I stopped eating meat, a little over a year ago, but I actually became full vegan a couple of months ago and juicing and all of that. My whole life, I was always a little overweight. And now I've lost three pounds in the last couple of weeks just because it's really the last thing I, I wanted to focus my mind power on. But without that, without health, you can't, the prosperity of money and everything else is completely meaningless. Amen. Melting Pot, a global podcast series hosted by Pyle, connects guests who have inspiring stories and reaches out to a multicultural audience over 52 countries. Guests are diverse, such as celebrities, entrepreneurs, travelers, and many more who've had a turning point in their lives and moved over to a holistic lifestyle. Follow us on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, Google Podcasts, social media. Hi, everyone. Today, I am in conversation with Brent Webb. Brent is an acclaimed mind power expert and motivational speaker, and he's been doing this for over two decades. He has focused his, focused his entire agenda around helping people create lives of prosperity, rewarding relationships, and also spiritual awareness and is internationally known for his inspirational and motivational style. In Brent's words, and I quote, uh, he says, a download from my mind to yours. Thank you so much for joining me um, this morning for you and this evening for me, Brent. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Great. So let's kick start by asking you to share a little bit about your personal journey and what actually led you to focus on helping people and creating prosperous lives and rewarding relationships. I was a little chubby kid from the Midwest in Ohio, and uh, I wanted to be a magician. When I was a little kid, it was all about magic tricks and that sort of thing. Um, I was, I would always go to the library and I would take out magic books. And one time I was about nine years old and I got a copy of a book called the magic of believing. And it was mistakenly put on that shelf. I realized now it wasn't a mistake, but at the time, of course it was. And it was all about the power of the mind, the power of belief. And it just, it just unlocked something for me. Even as a little child, I knew there was something more than I ever realized. It was the catalyst for me at, at nine and I started 9, 10, 11, 12, all through high school. I was still wanted to be a magician, but I started using my mind to combat my own issues because I started to realize really everything we come up against is a mindset thing. Really, if it's relationships, it's health, it's finances. I had I went through cancer in my 20s. And those are all mindset things because your mindset is going to tell you if you can get through this or not right? Because if you think you're done. So I really started, I was out doing, I was an opening act. I was a magician. I was working for celebrities and I was doing all these things, but I was drinking and I was doing drugs and I was blowing, spending money as fast as I could make it. And even though I had the big house and the cars, it just was so hollow. So I went back to that book in my twenties and it just changed everything. I left all the performing behind and I changed my entire career and just started teaching people, hey, there's something here, you have mind power, you can unlock it, you can change your life. And that's really everything I've ever done in my life is because of mind power. So yeah, it seems like you've had quite a journey to getting to the point where so you had all kinds of experiences until the fact that suddenly something clicked in your brain. And you said that whatever you've been doing up until then was absolutely as you said, hollow, and you can change your life and become a lot more positive and spiritual. And, and that's the direction that you really took. So that's really interesting. So what is the importance of setting goals? And when it comes to achieving, especially you want to have a a prosperous life, you want to have a spiritual kind of thinking what are what how important is it really to set yourself goals without a goal you're never going to achieve anything the problem is people have vague goals i want to be rich i want to be in love i want to have this it's never anything concrete and one of the people one of the celebrities i met very early on was i don't know if you remember there was a show called the love boat 
And the captain of the love boat, Gavin McLeod, was, became a great friend of mine. And he used to say, life is like a cruise ship. And I thought, oh, this is going to be some crazy analogy, but it was very profound. And he said, these ships are billion dollar ships. They're all computerized. You go up to the bridge, you put in the data and you turn the switch and the ship arrives in the next port. It's almost completely automatic. Now that's because you put in the data, the ship knows where it's going. If you just went up onto the, the deck, up into the, the crew there with the crew, and you just flipped on the engines and let the ship go, it would crash, obviously. It's never going to make it because it has no clear goal. And yeah. that's really what it is. By, by keeping things ambiguous in your mind, not having an end game, not being able to visualize what you want and feel it, you're never going to get it. So goals are important. But as far as living prosperously and all of that, it just starts with watching your thoughts. Wherever you are right now watching us, if you start to become aware of the voice in your head, I call it the bitchy roommate. It's the person who lives with you. You can't get away from them. They insult you all the time. They tell you how horrible you are. So you start paying attention to what that voice is saying, because it's usually 98% negative, And it's also a lot of BS because it's just not true. So awareness is really the very first thing to do. Once you know, wow, there's a voice talking in my head and you realize that voice isn't me. That's really where the awakening starts, because then you realize I can get past that noise and I can start focusing on my goals. Essentially, you have to be able to have clarity on filtering all the noise in the background and then moving towards something that is positive and helps you see more clearly. I think that's what you're really saying. Okay, so how do you help people? What are some of the steps that you take in order for people? Because there's a lot of self-doubt in people's minds. And so how do you help them with that kind of clarity? What are some of the very important tools that you use? And what are the tools that you recommend for people that you talk to in order for them to be able to overcome self-doubt? Most of my work for the first, because I've been doing this 30 years. So the first 20 years was celebrities and millionaires and CEOs and professional sports teams. And they would bring me in. And I started to realize these people aren't the people that need this because they all have managers and agents and they have nannies and they have accountants and they have a staff of people, right? But they're very, they are able to use mind power because they're able to realize I can take this, I can focus it in my life where it matters. They don't have a lot of other distractions because they've got people to handle everything else. So I really tell people the very first thing to do, get a couple of post-it notes, Draw something, a heart, a flower, a happy face. Stick those around the house, on, behind your desk, on the fridge, on the mirror, whatever. The idea is when you see that, it's your reminder. Okay, what's on my mind right now? Because that's what you have to do. You have to figure out what your mind is constantly churning out. So I tell people, keep a pad, keep a pen. You see that note? Okay, what's on my mind right now? And you're thinking about the birthday party when you were four and you embarrassed yourself or whatever it is, you write it down. You don't judge it. You look at it. And at the end of a week, you look at all of the notes you wrote down and you will realize it's almost all negative. It's 90 some percent of the time. And so again, what awareness is the very first key. So the tools don't really matter how you get there. It's the awareness of what's going on. Because once you realize it's usually things, these are things created when you were a child. The first 10 years of our life, we are in record mode. I always tell people, it's like you have a little book and you write down everything that happens to you, every experience you have, everything you do. And then at 10 years old, the pages run out. You have no more places to write. So for the rest of your life, anything you do, you're going to take out your little book and you're going to use it to, so you're going to use something you created when you were immature, when you weren't, you know, you weren't an adult. That's what's running in your head anytime you're on autopilot. Anytime we're not in the now and we're in the past and we're worried about something we could have done or we're in the future worried about something that we think is going to happen, that tape is the tape that's running. So it's all the programming from when you were a child. So if you were told you weren't good enough, only rich people are evil or whatever your belief patterns were created, that is what you're living with now. So the awareness will start to bring these things out. And as soon as they come into the light, they disappear because they can't survive the scrutiny. They aren't logical. They don't make sense. They don't serve you anymore. So as soon as they come out of you, you almost laugh at them, right? It, they just don't hold up. So that's the first thing. Second, I tell people, name the voice in your head. 
because the voice in your head is not you. The voice in your head is the conditioned past trying to help you and warn you. So I tell people, you name it. I name my voice Carl. Anytime the voice starts, I can now go, there goes Carl again. Carl's being crazy. And I, you think of that voice as a little kid, a little petulant child, and it takes the power away because it's not the voice of God. It's not the voice of the future. It's the voice of your conditioned past, like a little immature child. So you look at it that way and it gives you the ability to almost, you're standing away from it. The voice is happening, but you're the overseer. You're the, you're, you're the soul there. So you're now able to disconnect from that. And the more you do that and the more you bring awareness, it starts creating space. Every time something happens in your life that's a drama, instead of getting sucked in, there's now space there and you can stand and decide, do I want to get pulled into this? So awareness is the first thing. As soon as you bring that, everything else starts to fall in place almost automatically. Awareness is the key. Yeah. And also, I think it's important to think about now and what may have happened in the past would have been at different stages in your life. And so the process in your brain, the way it worked would have been very different. So you have to, I think, keep moving forward and think about today and now and the awareness around you now, rather than what happened in the past and what and you cannot anticipate what's going to happen in the future. So I think, yes, you're absolutely right that the key is now and you feel the awareness of what it is now and you absorb it rather than letting it go because you're confused in your head about, do I follow what I did in the past or do I already start thinking about the future? Yes, that that is a very, very important aspect of creating this aura around you. And yeah, no, I completely understand that. So how do you strike a balance? Because in today's world, it's all about, I, I'm not sure if you believe that prosperity equals material success, because that's what I think in general, a lot of people believe. So how do you differentiate between prosperity and material success. I always tell people abundance does not just mean money. And that's the thing. When people hear prosperity, they assume right away it means Lamborghinis and mansions and all of that. And I've had mansions and sports cars. And I tell you, in a day, in a week, it disappears. The, the feeling you thought you were going to have goes. It's not, it's hollow. Like I said, it's not real. So I tell people you want prosperity, but you want it in all areas of your life. There is nothing in nature. If there was a monkey in nature that hoarded all the bananas from the other monkeys and didn't, and the people, other monkeys were dying, and there was one monkey who had all the bananas, we would go. There, that's a big problem. But that's what we do. We have billions, and all these, and then we have people living on the street. It's so unequal. If you're just focused on money, you're you're going to live. I don't care how much money you have. The the life is going to be hollow. So prosperity has to be an abundance of love, and, and that's where it has to start. An abundance of finances. You you want to be financially free. People don't understand. They think it's freedom is what it is. I want to go where I want, do what I want, when I want. That's what fi real freedom is, right? You want to be healthy. You want to be. So it's a mix of all of that. I just started a year ago. I stopped eating meat a little over a year ago, but I actually became full vegan a couple of months ago and juicing and all of that. My whole life, I was always a little overweight. And now I've lost three pounds in the last couple of weeks, just because it's really the last thing I, I wanted to focus my mind power on. But without that, without health, you can't, the prosperity of money and everything else is completely meaningless. Right. Yeah, my whole life, it was focused on up until my 20s. It was all about the money. It was all about the fame. It was all about showing off and, and getting standing ovations. And it's just not about that. You really, as, as I've toured the world and I've met, I've chanted for a week in a Buddhist monast monastery, I've done all of these things. And I've seen the most miraculous things that I did as a magic trick. I saw, I have seen done it for real. I saw uh, a monk tell me, think of a word and told me the word I was thinking of, okay? Because of the connection, because of this mass consciousness, it just changes everything. So I think not, one thing is too, you're not in competition. I love what you said about creation, because that's a great word. We are creating, we were co-creating our existence, right? But we're always worried about everyone else. We're, we're, we're not in competition because you and I, 
me and anyone else, we have we don't have the same problems. We don't have the same strengths or weaknesses or pasts. So there's never real competition because you don't have two equal people. You have people that have w- completely different experiences. So you forget about looking at the person next to you. You forget about the idea that there's only one pie. And if you don't get your piece, everyone, everyone else is going to take it. And you realize there's enough for everyone. And you start coming from that place of love. You're not, you don't want to be the monkey that hoards all the bananas, you know, right? You want to connect with everyone and the abundance. Yeah. If you are that monkey, then you won't be able to, you'll get so isolated from everyone else because they're not going, then you're not equal and they're not even going to feel comfortable around you because you've deprived them of that equality and their share of whatever it may be. Yeah, no, absolutely. I understand. I understand what you're trying to say there. So yeah, and you're not living a life. Yeah. You're not living a life. You're living an illusion of a life. You're living what you think a life should be or what your parents told you it should be. You're never, you're living a parallel existence to this gorgeous, people go outside, they don't see the beauty that's there, the sky, the tr- we don't see that. We're driving somewhere and in the back of our subconscious, it's telling us, turn left, turn right. We're not doing that. In our mind, we're worried about what we're going to have for dinner. We're arguing with our wife. When we get home, we're doing the argument in our head. We live inside our minds. We don't really live a life. So the awareness, again, fix, it starts to change all that. And you don't have to do anything. You don't, I tell people, I'm not going to take you through all your problems like a therapist would and make you relive it and make you feel it and make you go through it again. You've got those things held inside you. We're going to release them so you can start living your life. You're holding all the, it's like a hoarder. You've hoarded all these bad memories and feelings in you that you need to get rid of to live your life. Yeah. What are some of the resources or practices that you would suggest or recommend to people who come to you for, I I don't know if help is the right word, or who just come to you to open up something within them? And the word, of course, here is awareness. So what um, are some of the resources or practices that you do suggest to them? You have mentioned uh, earlier on about sticky notes, right? But that's just one of the several things I'm sure that can be used in order for people to then practice it on a ongoing basis. And also some of the resources that you may have, whether in terms of books or whatever it may be, if you could just share some of that and just highlight some of it, yeah. I think for one thing, in in, in my opinion, and and people that I work with, and what again, what I've done is I've created a community Community where I'm not selling courses and books and all these things. I have other things, but I'm that's not why I'm here. That's not why I do this. I have free communities where I just give this away because I really want people. I think that's how we change things. We're in such a bad place. So I tell people with me in my in my experience, you can't get to where you want to be without some sort of meditation. You can't get to where you want to go without time where you're connecting to yourself. Because now, especially now, we're living in a society where it's so fast paced, we're on our phones all the time, we we are disconnected from us, we're disconnected from everyone else too, but the worst thing is that we're disconnected from ourselves. So I started meditating, I started, I chant, because I'm a Buddhist, but I, that's not something people have to do, but the meditation, you've got to take some time, twice a day, I do an hour in the morning, hour in the evening, but I, I suggest five minutes to people to start, is to sit there and connect with yourself. Do a mantra in your head, do something. What's going to happen is your mind is not used to being trained. Our minds, it's like a monkey in a cage. And we think that the mind is in control of us. And we've almost laid down to it. It's actually the other way. We have the power, but we don't realize it. So you will start to gain that power when you start to sit there. All you've got to do is sit and be quiet. Your mind is going to say, your back sore, your legs sore. It's what are you having for lunch? I'm hungry. I got to make this phone. Your mind is going to do everything it can to get you off the floor. But if you sit there for five minutes and, and you're eventually, and you're going to increase the time, but your mind is going to go, you know what? This guy's got willpower. He's not going to let me out of this. I'll just sink into the background. And that's what will happen. And the more and more you do that, you do it as a practice. You didn't get here. None of us got to where we are in, with our bad habits in a day. It's repetition of the same bad thing. So there's no magic pill and no magic spell that's going to, that's going to give you and that you're going to all of a sudden tomorrow, what you've got to start doing the right things over and over again. So meditation is key for anything that I teach because 
you without it you don't have you don't have any understanding of yourself you don't have any connection to yourself so sitting in silence with yourself again it's almost will work itself automatically all you've got to do is if you're doing a mantra in your head i tell people whatever it is you say and i also do transcendental meditation where i'm using the mantra they gave me but a great mantra i tell people is a uh, philoli it's f i l o l i it means fight for what you believe in love the life that love the life that you want to li live and lo um, love your fellow man. So you say that word and what you do is you just constantly, anytime your mind starts thinking about anything else, just bring it back to the mantra and over and over again. And I find that works better than breathing meditation or anything else for somebody just starting. Because all you've got to do in your mind is say a word over and over. And as soon as you're thinking about Aunt Mary, you go back to the word. And then at the end of five minutes, you get up. And then maybe in a week, you add a minute until you can do 15, 20 minutes. You do that twice a day, your life will absolutely transform without doing anything else. Just that will, will change your life. So it's, you have to, the way you channel. So you're, and repetition is what you're saying. You're absolutely, <laughs> you keep repeating. If you keep repeating negativity, then that's what's going to stay in your mind. But if you use that mantra and you keep repeating it again and again, it just becomes a way for you. Yeah, no, absolutely. That makes a lot of sense. You did mention community. So before we wrap up this conversation, if you could just, for listeners and viewers, if you could just suggest to them how they can, those who are really keen, and, and I'm sure there are a lot of people who would like to become a part of this community and have a different kind of learning. So how, how do they connect with you um, and become a part of your community? Like I said, it's free to join. We have a Facebook community. There's about 10,000 people in there and we're very selective. There's hardly any spam because we're very selective in the process of who gets in because it has to be somebody. We want people that want to make change, that want to you know transform and want to help each other. So we have a lot of people that have gone through this that are helping new people in the group. So the best way to find me, you just go to brentsgroup.com. It's B-R-E-N-T-S, no apostrophe. So brentsgroup.com. You can get in, you'll get, a, you'll get your invite to the group, you can join. And I do Facebook Lives and free trainings. And I, there's every day, there's just tons and tons of knowledge and posts in there. And it's just helping so many people. So of all the things I've done, I performed at the White House, I've worked with celebrities. This community is really the thing I'm most proud of because I get messages every day from people telling me how their lives have changed and it's done this with their relationship. That's so much more rewarding than standing ovations and sports cars. So uh, again, brentsgroup.com. Just we'd love to have you come and join and I'll take you step by step and we'll take you through the process. Thank you so much, Brent. And I'm sure you'll have a lot of people signing up for this. And thank you. And I appreciate and I see that calmness in you and the serenity, which I know has developed over time. And it's really been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. And I'm sure all the people who have benefited from your your teachings or your I don't know if teachings is the right word but more of your yeah. yeah your communication and how you're able to help them I think is quite is visible and and just keep on with the good work thank you so much Brent for more weekly conversations, do listen to Melting Pot on Spotify, Apple and Google Podcasts. Follow us on YouTube and on Instagram at Podcast Melting Pot. So until the next episode, this is Pyle signing off.